Event number two of the day, the Team Relay here in the Eberspasha FIL Luge World Cup. My name is Mark Hatton. I had Diana Eitberger of Team Germany with me this morning, and today I've got Alex Falazzo of Team Australia with me. He is Team Australia, but also America Pacific bronze medalist, a top 10 World Cup slider as of yesterday, and the fastest man in the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been a good journey so far, and I'm enjoying it, man. Thank you. Alex, uh, you're in this uh, partnership with Canada. Um, that's got to be fantastic coming back to Whistler as yeah. your home track. Yeah, we've had plenty of runs here. You know, I'm looking forward to seeing what these uh, Canadians can do. They're first off pretty soon. So we've got a POV shot on the sled. Let us know what we're seeing here. So this is out into, this is into corner nine now. This is a, quite a tricky part of the track and in corner 10 is just about building speed, getting a good push over to 11 and then really setting you, setting you up for this fast bottom section of the track into corner 13, let it fly in 14, and really keep it away from that right wall going into 16, and then you can get a really good push off 16 if you, uh, if you do it quite well. And then the pad will be right there when they come up the finish run, the, the outrun. And that's the thing that makes the team relay so brilliant, isn't it? This pad going uphill where the sled's kind of a little light because you kind of get negative gravity on the sled going uphill. Um, sitting up at probably still going over 100 clicks. Oh, yeah. And then trying to hit this pad to open the gate at the top for the other athlete. The other thing we need to say, we've got nine teams, but these teams are made up of four teams. We have, men, we have women, then men's doubles, then men's singles, and then women's doubles all one after the other. It can be mayhem. It can be very exciting racing. And there are definite peaks and troughs, isn't it? If you go from hero to zero very quickly in the team relay. Yeah, I mean, pressure builds as each sled goes down the track. And I've got a feel for these, these women doubles right now. They got a lot of pressure being the last ones off. It's their first time doing a team relay. This is, it's gonna be exciting. Yeah, and who, who's your dark horse for today? Who do you think is going to pull out an uh, interesting performance? Really, I, you can give it to anyone. This is the first event with four sleds, but I'm really loving the, the Latvians if they put down some clean runs. You know, I think the Americans as well have plef, left plenty in the tank for over the, uh, over the weekend so far, so it's oh, anyone's game, though. Well, here we go. Your teammates from Team Canada. Oh, yeah. Uh, maybe one day Australia will have a team, but we start at the top with Trinity Ellis of Pemberton. Off she goes. We are off, ladies and gentlemen. This is Abish Basha, FIL Luge, team relay action right here from Whistler Sliding Centre, the fastest track in the world. Trinity Ellis, one of your teammates. Yeah, she's a fantastic slider. She knows the track like the back of her hand, and she's looking to put down a good run today. And she's, she's setting the pace. She, she gets to pull a full start, being the first one off. But, um, let's, see, let's see if she can do it. She's set herself well into 12, gliding 313 quite nicely. She's looking comfortable on the sled right now. And you took a look at the track conditions earlier. What, what, how did you think they looked? The track is beautifully made right now. It's like easiest it's ever been. It's quite smooth. She it's goes to the touch nice. pad, opens the gate up top straight away for Wardrobe Zajanski. That's incredible reaction time from Wardrobe Zajanski. Let's go, boys. I've been having a bit of a tough run this preseason, but I know they're looking forward to this race big time. Absolutely. And you see that gate open at the top. And it's, it's tough for the sliders that haven't done a lot of this, isn't it? Because they're not doing a, a proper start. It's kind of a half start yeah. from being in a position of compression and then blasting through the handles. As yeah, well. it's, a, it's a different type of start for sure. I mean, these guys train in a little bit, but it's quite strange. Looking good here though, Wardrobe Zajanski, nice 15-16. This has been catching out a lot of our doubles athletes yesterday. As they come up, they've got to hit that touch pad. Beautiful run. I like how he laid back the whole time, just stuck his hand up. That's that's all the time. We're carrying speed, I guess, aren't we? Yeah. Up, the, up that up As soon as you sit up in the sled, you are you, you become a bit of a um a, a sail. A sail, exactly. So you gotta stay laying down for as long as possible. So on the track now, I mean I love this guy, Theo Downey. He's such an exciting athlete to watch. He's young, he's super keen, uh, just breaking into the senior ranks and it's been really impressed with him and Dylan Morse, both of them. Yeah, it's been great sliding along these guys. I know uh, they're, they're pushing me as much as I'm pushing them, and we're really working off each other right now. It's fantastic. Beautiful Theo, exit of 16 there from Downey. 
Stay down, Sam. Nice, man. That's good. Good work there. It opens now for Ember and BT on the double sled. Now, interestingly, I was saying to Kate earlier up on the dock that I spoke to Ember and BT earlier and I said, what's the toughest thing about doubles right now? And they said, the start. Actually, getting down the track, they're quite enjoying. They said the start is where they've really been struggling because they only got together this year, didn't they? That's right. It takes a bit of coordination to both paddle and sink. These, guys, these girls haven't been sliding long together at all, and they're really showing what they can do right now. I guess they've probably got 30 runs max together in the doubles. Yeah. And they're looking fantastic. Seventh place in the women's doubles yesterday. Beautiful 16, having to work nice, a little good bit push of out of there. Come on, guys. Beautiful. Four clean runs. That's fantastic. Look, this yeah. could do pretty well. I, I'm really liking their, their spot right now. That oh, was guys. slick, wasn't it? I mean, not much really to talk about in terms of errors on the track. Mm -hmm. So that is the time to beat 250.366. Remember, we're timed to a thousandth of a second. As we saw in the women's race earlier today, at one point we had four sleds with five thousandths of a second between them. Quicker than you can blink. Here we see, is this Trinity? It's Trinity laid back, super relaxed, toes pointed. Tell no. me about the relaxation on the sled. How does that make a difference? So it, it's the suspension. You are the suspension on the sled. So you need to really like, lay loose and let it jiggle you around a little bit, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And Amber waiting to the end to sit up. And uh, well, technically as well, well, this is our first track record of the day. The old track record is now void with the team relay now having four sleds. So that time to beat is also, maybe just for a few moments, the track record. <laughs> team Canada will be hoping that stays as the track record for a lot longer as we move on to our next team. I've been really impressed with Ukraine. I've been really impressed with the Ukraine team, but tell us about, tell us about this paddle. Yeah. yeah, so it's not hung right above the finish line. It's a little bit further up. So these these guys are usually used to sitting up as soon as as soon as they cross the finish line. But now they have to you know try to remember to stay down a little bit longer and then really reach for that paddle and punch it to uh, it clicks over. So that opens the gate for the next starter. What happens to the sled when you sit up on it? It gets really light. Yeah, the sled is made to run when you're lying down on it. So as soon as you sit up on it, it becomes unstable. And things like can a get a little wobbly. Soap. Yeah, <laughs> you're slipping around all over the joint. <laughs> okay, Ukraine have been incredible. Here we have the world junior champion, Yulia, Yuliana Tunitska, who has been incredibly impressive over the last few days. I watched her in the, uh, the Junior World Cup here last week, and she was absolutely flying and looking really comfortable. I think people come to Whistler, and they're kind of, the name makes some noise. But actually, when they get comfortable with this track, as you know, it becomes kind of quite a nice place to come with super smooth ice, a fantastic track crew led by Tracy Seitz and Rob Zernow, and uh, guys that make some of the best ice in the world. Yeah, I mean, this track, it scares people. They, they see the speeds we're going, and it, um, it definitely throws a few people off, and that's where the home track advantage comes in handy. For sure, just the extra confidence. She's putting a good run together right now. I think she went a little later into 16. She would have liked, but she's really crushed that exit pressure. Beautiful. She's got to reach for the finish line. Nice. Straight away, those gates open at the top. There's some aggression on start. A little wobbly from the men's doubles, though. This is Iho Hoy and Nazari Kachmar. Kachmar is the new backman in this pairing. Hoy has had, done quite a few World Cups with his previous backman, and this is a new pairing for this year. They look pretty good. They do. They're doing quite well right now. Curve nine is quite difficult from Lady Start. It's uh, it's hard to see, but there's little minuscule skids um, that you can you can't really see them, but as an athlete you can feel them going three nine. And they seem to manage it quite well. Now he had to drop his feet there, a little high in 15. But seems where you can really see where the top man's steering, can't you? Where his yeah, foot's wrapping around the curve. Stay down. Up he goes, and we release one of my dark horses from the weekend, Anton Dukash. This guy's been having an awesome season. Yeah, Anton and I have been sliding together from day dot, and it's been fantastic racing against this guy throughout my career. And yeah, we really have a lot of fun. You guys shared a podium this weekend, didn't you? Yeah, in we the did. Nations Cup. Yeah, Nations Cup together. We've been we've been right next to each other for a while, for years now. So that's, he's a good man to have beside you on the podium. Those rivalries are great to have, aren't they? In the, within your team and also outside. Oh, well, he's gaining a bit of time on Theo right now. He's putting down a good run. Beautiful exit of 16. Nice push. sideways pressure, but he's 
dealing with it beautifully. Sits up a little soon, I think, but here, here comes Stetskiv and Moch. Another newish pairing. Elena Stetskiv doing triple duty at this World Cup. She's done the women's doubles. She's just got off the single sled from the women's race and she's had to go back and do the team competition. She's one of the hardest working ladies in the luge. Yeah, I don't know how these girls do it, you know, going back and forth so much. It's got to be taxing at some point, right? A little high on the exit. Oh, that's an early entrance to 12. She is... Oh my god, that could have ended a lot worse. She got pretty lucky right there to, to bump early to 13 and then not have Very any high issues. in the entrance of 16 Beautiful. there. Oh. Trying to get the set up. Gotta get the pad. Just Absolute time. disaster for Ukraine. Elena Stetskiv and Alexander Mark. I think it all starts this, this labyrinth, what they call uh, the Gold Rush Trail here in Whistler. That 11-12 transition, it's almost like the key to unlock the rest of the track, isn't it? If you get that wrong, finding your rhythm again is tough. Mm -hmm. That's why this track is quite dangerous, actually, because you get spud out. Of, if you get spud out of 12 just off, it can really just destroy the rest of your rhythm going down all the way to 16. So if you get exit 12 right, you're good. If not, hold on. Yeah, and try and, I guess, try and fix your mistakes in the curve if you can. Because mm -hmm. there's not a lot you can do on the flat, is there? On no, these that's right. And 13 is, it's a flat, right? So you're just like out of control, either skidding or, you know, looping it out way too much. Absolute disaster for Ukraine. Now, I feel so bad for them because they've had a really wonderful weekend, this team. And uh, that high exit, just, you're a bit of a passenger when you're going uphill with that, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, a few walls after the finish line is never a good feeling. And it's, um, you know, on TV it doesn't look that steep, but it's a, it's a decent elevation, isn't it? You go back up there. Yeah. yeah. That's where weight comes into, into the game, too. If you can really carry momentum all the way through to the Look finish. at that split from Anton. Tied to the Tied thousands. To the thousands. Uh, Ukraine were on such a good road. So our track record still stands at a 250.366 for the Team Relay, held by Team Canada. Still in the leader box, Ember Susco there. How about that for a story? Oh, it was fantastic, wasn't oh, cool. it? I'm so proud of her. She's she's killing it right now. Yeah, and she she just loves sliding as well. You know, some people get a little jaded with this lifestyle when they've been on the tour for years. Yeah. And I just think she's just loving luge right now and just loving going fast. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's easy to love it when you're doing well, too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Back to the top of the track for our third team. This is Team Romania. This is Karina Buzatola. Sorry, I've struggled with your name. Every time I've commentated on you this, this year, it's going to stop. Okay, Karina Buzatola here for Romania. That's better. Um, solid yeah. start from Buzatola. Beautiful start. And the entrance into the start curve is super important too for the women. You don't want to cut it in too deep. You don't want to go too early. It's it's quite a fine line. But that, She's putting together a great top of the track right now. And therein lies my next question, is for the men especially, how challenging is it, is it to come down to the women's start? It's, it's it's a challenge. It's quite tricky. You know, it's it's a it's a lot slower from men's start. I mean, from ladies' start compared to men's, but the lines are different. And you can throw some athletes off. But she's looking good here, Alex. A uh, little bit in the red, though. We're going to see how she compares to Trinity Ellis. That's a lot to make up on Team Canada, isn't it? Yeah, Trinity threw down. She, yeah. She had a great run. That was an incredibly slow change time as well, I think. That really, they took a while to get out of the gate there. And, uh, you know, in a sport that's time to the thousandths of a second, if you're not absolutely on top of your game when those gates open, that's uh, that's tough time to make back. Yeah, the reaction start is, is, is critical in this event. I think that's why I expect oh, another early entrance into 13, handled it quite well, just laid back and trusted it. Yeah, a little Got dab of the feet, line. keeping him safe. This looks like it could be a nice exit. It absolutely is. Up the finish, they're trying to lay down. And here we go, one of the veterans of the tour, Valentin Kretu, who was sliding when I was sliding. A very good time. And Valentin, you know, such a committed athlete and still loves luge. He loves it, man. He's, he's really enjoying himself on the circuit these days as well. It's, it's great to see. And now Romania, you know, such a long history in the sport as well. And, and coaches like you know, Apostol, they've got Eugen Radu coaching them as well, old, uh, old sparring partner of mine from long, long ago. Also a doubles and singles specialist. Um, Romania just 
they've got these tiny little tracks made of wood hidden all around the world, I feel. <laughs> I hear about it and say, where's your home track? And it's like, oh, it's Sinaya. And I'm like, there's a track there. Yeah, yeah Crazy made a goes. few little issues up the top of the track there. I think Krishi, that's that's where he lost most of that time. But here's the women's doubles. Their first time down the track in a team event. Hope they enjoy it. Yeah, Raluca Strama Tararu needs no introduction. Seventh place in the Pyeongchang Olympics. That was just incredible to see a nation such as Romania without the resources to be fighting for, you know, the top ten in an Olympic Games. Switch to, to doubles now, and she seems to be having fun. Yeah, she's really coming to her own on a double sled. It's been it's been great to see her, you know, transfer super high into 15. This she's going to need see. all that experience right now. Oh, feet Drops down. her feet. That's a, that's a lot of time. Unlucky there, Romania. Romania into third. That was Raluca Stramatoraru and Mihaela Manalescu of Romania on the women's doubles. Nice to see a smile from the doubles team because that was a tough day at the office uh, going into 16. Yeah, yeah it sure was. And the camera angle doesn't show it, but when you're that high in 15, you come out of 15 and you crush that right wall before 16. And I'm sure they might have, I think they might have done that just then. And this is a question I asked Diana. Um, okay, neither a particularly nice scenario. What would you rather? You go high in 15, would you rather get that bank shot to bounce you back into 16, or would you rather go incredibly late to 16? You obviously don't want to do either, but if you're going to have one or the I, other... I would... I'd take the bank shot, I think. I think I'd take the bank shot as well, <laughs> and just try and kind of straighten it up as I was banking Super late to 16. I mean, you can hit the roof from yeah, that, doing that. Yeah, so. I'd take the bank shot. Yeah. Okay, it's official. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the fast line, but... <laughs> yeah, it's <just> safe. <laughs> it's a safe one. Speed goes out of the window at some point in this sport. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to figure out how to keep it shining side down. Do you think she's lifting her hand a little early there? Yeah, she sat up a bit early, for sure. Such... I mean, I wonder if these guys got to look at where the pad was before the race. I mean... Valentin's looking strong, isn't he? He is. He looks like, like you. He's been, been hitting the gym this I, got, I was speaking to him. He's quite a strong man in the gym, actually. We were talking about numbers and, you know, what, what weights we're lifting. And, yeah, he's a, he's a strong bloke. Yeah. Okay, so Team Canada still in the leader box. There's Nicole Simon, ex-Team Canada slider from back in the day. Great to see her supporting the sport. She did a ton of work with BC Luge um, as we were setting up the whole kind of program here in Whistler, and she was instrumental in all our young athletes in Whistler becoming, you know, athletes like Trinity Ellis and so on and so forth. As we get back to the team relay, is Team Poland. This is Claudia Domolatska. Great start, four paddles. Super smooth, hey? Yeah, the girls seem to, some of them do three, some of them do four, but you've got to, four paddles is faster, right? Like, well, you get to a point that. where your paddles slow you down, though, don't you? I think you do. And also, Ooh, I think if you... bumped early to ten there. And that obviously costs so much because it's so flat, I guess. I mean, you have to be so precise in the top, in, in Whistler. Like, all tracks, but Whistler, I feel it really punishes you. Yeah, you say? it really does. Yeah. It's, it really flattens off down the bottom, so if you don't have a perfect upper section of the track, yeah, you just let, watch the time roll away. Nice exit from 16. Jeez, As we come Trinity to our next really turn. threw down. That's, yeah. uh, That's going to be the time to beat from Canada, absolutely. Okay, what? Wojtek Chimaluski and Jakub Kowaleski now. Chimaluski Kowaleski. We love welcoming these guys to Whistler. This is probably their fifth World Cup here. They always make the trip over to North America, and, and it shows. You know, they, they had a great doubles race. It escapes me what position they came, but they were a top ten. I think they were eighth in the doubles the other day, um, which is great to see, again, a geographically smaller nation, but really fighting it out with the top nations in, in Luge. Staying low, staying low, trying to hit that at the last minute. Releases the teammate, teammate being Mateusz Sokovic, who's had a tough time this week. He crashed in Nations Cup, and he's been struggling down at the bottom of the track. But I've got a good feeling for him this round. Yeah, I mean, he can... He, we had a start competition in Lake Placid uh, a few weeks ago, and he got second or third in the start competition. So, and he he was the second fastest reaction starter too. So this is this is his race. He's so quick out the gates. 
So if you can put a good run down right now, I'm sure they'll make back a bit of time. Just hanging in the exit of 14. They're a little high in the entrance, but nothing, nothing terrible. Decent exit, staying low, staying low, trying to sit up at the last minute as he releases the final sled for this Polish team. This is Nikola Domovic and Dominika Pikowska. Domovic Pikowska, another new pairing on the women's tour. A lot of these women, they're really innovators, aren't they, in this sport? It's such a new sport, the women's doubles, and uh, a lot of them are kind of working it out as they go. But the women's doubles have been around for a few seasons now, but this is this is the event that I think everyone's been looking forward to, to bring them onto the team relay. That's a huge step, and it really, I think it really finishes off the entire team atmosphere of racing. Absolutely, a decent number of teams, nine teams able to field a full, taking the sled out, taking the hands out of the sled a little early. This is what you were talking about, isn't it? Yeah. And you sit up on the sled and it turns into a, a bar of soap. Yeah, got really wobbly after the, after she hit the pad though, but she sat up way too early. She um, definitely was a sail before the, before the pad there. It's got to cost some, when, when we're talking, we go back to the thousandths of a second thing. But it's so important in this sport that those tiny details and sitting up early, but Team Canada, look at them, proud as punch, as they should be. Track record holders right now still with a 2.50366. So Poland doing enough for second place though, but they're 1.1 seconds back from Canada. That's a, that's a fair amount. That just shows how strong Trinity's first run was. Yeah, I mean, they all put an awesome run down, so. I think they'll be sitting there for a bit longer than we think, too. I mean, those guys, they, they put it all together. And the track is probably slowing down ever so slightly from yeah. that initial spritz. Yeah. So the spritz is when, they, when the track crews spray water on. What that does, it creates kind of a, a one millimeter or less, probably less than a millimeter, um, incredibly fast layer of ice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's faster and it also adds grip as well. That's because it's not like rock solid ice. It's a yeah, it's it's kind a, of a, mix, a, isn't a spritz it? is nice. You go faster and you have more grip. You know, sliding without a spritz can be a bit, a bit uh, wishy-washy sometimes. Yeah, what's not to like about going faster and having more grip? <laughs> <laughs> Wish Luge was always like that. <laughs> Chimaluski Kovalevsky, look at that. Absolutely tied with uh, Team Canada on that second. That shows the kind of form those boys are. Okay, as we go back to the start for Team Italy, and this is Verena Hoffa. Reina Hoffa had a lovely race this morning in the women's, incredibly strong athlete. Um, they've got that wonderful start facility in Maranson in, uh, in the Tyrol. And uh, it's a great start facility. Have you been there? No, I haven't. It's got I've a couple it. of curves as well, so you can kind of practice sliding curves. Yeah, they do a start the competition there in the, uh, the preseason too that I will make my way to at some point. Yeah, I, I never got there. I, I wish I had. Um, just to, you know, fill up the second page of the results. Oh, we're in the green. This is the first time we've seen this. I mean, this is this is a, a very strong team. The, the Italians could take this from Canada if they have four consistent runs. But from green to red in the blink of an eye, though, that was uh, that was incredibly interesting. Do you think that's the track? I think that might have been quarter nine. I mean, the Canadians are so good at that curve. They've had so many runs here. She might have had a few small mistakes. The other thing we've got to remember is we have Nagla Malie, who are no slouches on this uh, on this Whistler's track, and then obviously we've got Dominic Fisher. Yes, yeah. the slider's slider. <laughs> he looks fantastic on the sled. He's a start beast. He's an all-round top bloke. I am uh, looking forward to looking forward to watching slider. Back in the green again. Man, they're going back and forth right now. Ivan Nagla, Fabian Malie had a great doubles competition here. They were looking incredibly comfortable in the doubles competition. They're just m moving from strength to strength down this track, I think. Nice smooth run so far for these guys. Beautiful, got under that first pressure in 16, spat out perfectly through the exit. Staying low until the final moment releases Dominic Fishnall and now. I know all the commentators have been waxing lyrical about Dominic, but he's a beautiful slider to watch, isn't he? He is. Those, that's, those start pedals look very, very powerful. It's, quite it's, it's, it's great to see. He, it's a whole package. He's got the fast sled. He's got a great, um, great coaching team behind him. Big start. And just aesthetically, you know, if I'm showing the kids I coach, if I want to say, hey, this is how you do luge, I would show videos of Dominic. Yes, 100%. 
And then Dominic would watch videos of Armand Zerg. That's, that's the way it works. <laughs> Still in the green, Fishnala have got his team back into contention with a dip. Wow, that is almost a half a second lead. So we have the final Italian pair, and this is Andrea Vota and Marianne Oberhofer, both pretty accomplished single sliders in their own right. Yeah. But then you put two solid single sliders and a double sled, and uh, double trouble. Wow, eight tenths in the bank right now. It's theirs to lose, right? Like they, if they can keep it shiny side up, shiny side down right now, I think they've, I think they've got this in the bag. Absolutely. This is, curve 16 has been the problem for a lot of these teams, but that 14, 15 transition looks nice. Little skiddy on the entrance of 16, but not enough to cost them. Nice exit of 16, staying low, staying low, sitting up a little early. One second ahead of Canada, Team Italy, your new leaders and track record holders, 249.339. That's Team Italy into first place. Four great runs, that's what it takes. That's what it takes, and these guys were so fast, a second over the Canadians right now, that's, that's insane. And Canadians all threw down phenomenal runs as well, so. These guys are doing something right. Absolutely. I guess there's a lot of pressure on them. You know, you don't want to let your teammates down, do you? No, definitely not. A little wobbly getting the hands in the sled there, because I guess any mistake on this track at the top is incredibly expensive. Mm -hmm. There's a little bump in eight there, I've noticed. Like, the track is so smooth, and you watch yeah. the legs just, like, kind of flop up through that straightaway. Did you notice that yesterday? No, I didn't. I only noticed it when I was watching sleds today, actually. I didn't notice it sliding. And it is quite an, it's a bit of an armchair ride down this track, isn't it, when it's going right? Yeah, it's quite comfy. And then when it starts to go less well. <laughs> <laughs> so it's more of a rickety chair. <laughs> well done, Italy. <laughs> Fantastic <laughs> splits, though. That's quite interesting, they. Yeah, yeah. Just, just that's four incredible. consistent splits. Great work from, especially from uh, Fishnala and uh, doubles, Nadla Malia. That's great, great sliding as we move to Team USA now. Now, Team USA, um, so much depth, really. Uh, Emily loves this track. There's uh, Summer Britcher and the rest of the team, Johnny Gustafsson cheering on their teammates, and there's some very determined faces from Team USA. Oh, there's so much left in the bank for these guys. Like, Emily had a, a rough second run in right. her race. And Zach and Sean he blew it on theirs as well. And Tucker, Tucker as well wasn't really happy yeah. with his results. So hopefully they can put it all together right now. No, you've got to, you've got to, they have such podium potential for this race. Mm -hmm. You know, there's n really no weaknesses in this team. Emily Sweeney sets us off for the USA in this Ava Spasha team relay. She makes me nervous on that start. She like kind of skips her hand yeah. slips and she's done that a few times now, but it always seems to go okay. Maybe that's, maybe that's a thing. Beautiful line through 9, 10. Pushed early over to 11. The sled, the sled sounds nice as well, doesn't it? It does. Back in the green. Oh, she's laying down right now. Pushing back, head position, toes pointed, squeezing those pressures perfectly. A little high in the entrance, but not terrible. Nice exit. Up she goes, opens up the gate for De, De Gregorio Hollander. Let's go, boys. Let's make up for those mistakes yesterday. I'm sure they're hungry right now. Wow, coming off that gold medal in Lake Placid. They've just got to be, I mean, even though they had a tough day yesterday, they've got to be, the confidence has got to be so high. Oh, yeah. So you are watching the first team relay ever to have four teams in it, four sleds per team in this Eversbacher Team Relay World Cup presented by BMW. Beautiful run from these boys right now. They've cleaned up their mistakes. Smooth out of 16, lots of green to see. Okay, they've got a hundred to play with. Let's go, Tucker, let's see what you got. Now, this man is the fastest starter in the world. Reaction and full start, so I'm sure that that split for the reaction was something special. And I'd say outside of the guys that do doubles and singles, he's probably one of the hardest working men in the world. Yeah. Constantly tinkering with his sled, constantly tinkering with uh, the physical attributes. A real no, student yeah, he, the He's the hardest worker in the room, especially in the gym. Yeah, I've, I've heard. <laughs> 
Okay, he's building that lead. That's a, a third of a second high in the entrance of 16. That may cost them. Staying low all the way up to the last minute. Oh, lost a bit of time there in that 15-16 transition. Managed to lose two tenths with that mistake in 15-16 as he releases from the start gate Siobhan Forgan and Sophia Kirkby. Lots of green still, and it's about the same as what he gave them out of the gate. Yeah, they haven't lost any time. They haven't gained any just yet. We'll see what it's like this next split. Okay. Losing a touch of time, but they're holding it together. A bit high through 15, caught that pressure nicely. They did, though. didn't they? That entrance 16 drive was absolutely on time. Let's see what they've got crossing the Ooh. finish line. <laughs> Two hundredths of a second <laughs> for Team USA. This, as we told you, four sleds. That's four miles of racing, give or take a couple of yards. And no, two hundredths of a second in it. That's incredible. I'd love to know how much how much actual how much track that is on the on, on the way down. It's gotta be it like can't be more than a sled right? length or so. <laughs> no. hey. It's got to be close to like a sled length or yeah. something. Any mathematicians that are watching on YouTube or on any of the channels, please um, go into the live chat, live comments on YouTube. You tell us two hundredths of a second at approximately 130 kilometers an hour. What does that equate to mm -hmm. in distance? We might be surprised. Mm. Very fluid. So that's that bump we were talking. I think that's one of the <laughs> expansion joints, isn't it? Yeah. So the expansion joints are when the track is built so that it can expand and contract between winter and summer. You actually have gaps in between the sections of the track. Oh, it's, it's ridiculous for commenting, we're commenting on that bump. I mean, this, this track is so smooth, and <laughs> most other tracks is about, you know, a thousand of those on the way down, so... <laughs> yeah, the rest of the track's beautiful. <laughs> it's not a reflection on the track crew at all. I mean, they've done incredibly well, the track crew, haven't they, to keep this in such great shape with this warm weather? Yeah. I mean, these guys are fantastic. A bunch of Aussies work in the track as well. Uh, it's great to hear that accent yeah, while could, I'm training. You could probably put together a relay team. <laughs> <laughs> just throw them on a sled. Yeah, it's the solution. <laughs> wow. So there we go. Our new leaders, the United States of America. Track record 2.49.311. That is the time to beat from the United States of America. In second place, we have Italy. And in third place, we have Team Canada. Okay, so the heavily fancied Austrian team. There's the man at the moment in the background, Wolfgang Kindle, hopping on the back of a double sled and just showing how talented he is at both singles and doubles. But talking about talent, Madeline Agel, what do you got to say? I mean, she's she's really impressive. Like she she throws down consistently. She's got an awesome start. I know she's a bit injured at the moment. I think her shoulder's playing up a bit, and um, she, so she hasn't been able to go full out. But she seems to be able to pull it out on race days. Straight into the green for Madeline. That's a very nice to see for her teammates, because they're hoping that she's going to give them a bit of a cushion so that they can uh, lay back and enjoy the ride down the hill. A little bit off in 9-10, I thought. She went a little later to 10 I would have, than I would have liked. Really cleaning it up down the bottom here now. That's a nice 14-15. That's going to get her nice and early into 16. See, she doesn't drop too much in the middle and gets that beautiful exit. Sets up maybe a touch early. Eight hundredths of a second to play with, but we are only on to the second members of the team, and that is Thomas Stoy and Wolfgang Kindle. What do you think about this doubles team? I mean, I'm loving Kindle doing both right now. It's it's fantastic to see him in the start house between you know between races. It's uh, <laughs> he has a laugh about it, but he can go back and forth like like no other. I think it's a bit easier. As a, he must be right. I know he's he's. I think he, he was saying to me that um, going from singles to doubles is a bit easier than going from doubles to singles. And yeah, oh, very high in the entrance of 16, though, and high on the exit. Oh, that's it's a hard a hit out of 16. Hit. Staying down. Ooh. Okay, they didn't lose that much. Okay, so we have 800s that somewhere along the way we have to make up. This will show us how fast Tucker's reaction start was. There were 800s that last split. I think, I think if there's any man you want to try and make up that time... There we go. Look at that. Two tenths. Jonas Mueller, what a great choice. Yeah. 
So Tucker found uh, 12 hundreds in that reaction start just then. That's that's incredible. That's incredible. And he's holding it right now. He put a good run down. Oh, he made a few mistakes through 15, 16. Through the exit of 15, would I be right? This could be. This could be close. Oh my God! Where did that come from? Yeah. Okay, girls, this is yours, Selena Agel and Lara Kip. Let's see how this doubles pairing from Austria does. They've got a little bit of a cushion, but not as much as they could have. There was absolute disaster for their men's doubles team in their second run, struggling with that exit of 16. Into the red. Yeah, I think they made a, a, there was a little bit of skidding going on in nine. Other than that, it's been quite clean. Okay, 200s back. back. This next split is going to be very telling. As they go up the finish line, here we go over the finish. Setting oh. up. Whoa. Nine hundredths okay. of a second. Man, there's some fast sleds. That is some fun. The Austrian sleds accelerating through those bottom corners. Mm -hmm. It's quite incredible. Mm -hmm. Though yeah, the technicians jets. they have, absolutely. And look what it means to them. Two sisters there. <laughs> Selena and Madeline Eagle celebrating together. That's got to be a good feeling, celebrating with your sibling. Big time. I love to see her. I, I, I love how there's so many athletes now on the team relay. Like seeing six of them celebrate together is, is great, you know? Yeah, doing a team sport. I'm not even going to mention that bump. <laughs> it's not there. It doesn't exist, ladies and gentlemen. The track is perfectly smooth. Yeah, that's that later entrance into 10 that I was talking about. There's a 0 0.085 on the change there. So confident. Through yeah, 10, and 11. I guess that mistake in 15 compounded into that exit 16, didn't it, mm -hmm. for the doubles team? Hopefully we'll get to see that again. This looks like the shot. As is that a spike that came off in the track? Someone's going to get it out anyway. Go. Very, very happy Austrian doubles team there in uh, Kindle, Stoy, Stoy Kindle. Um, and the entire team relay team, they have put in a lot of work and they've guaranteed themselves at minimum, a bronze medal. So we've got two more teams left to go. We have Team Latvia now. Now, Latvia have been so exciting to watch. And Kendija Apayoda, she's been absolutely wonderful. But this is Alina Vitola. She's been fantastic this weekend. She was in fourth place after the first one, dropped to six, but had she's got so a, many she's got mistakes. A, she's got an extremely powerful start. These girls for a for the size of it, look the size of her arms, but man, she produces some power down that ramp. It's incredible. Let's take a look at it. I think this may go straight into the green. You have to tell, let's see. I'm not getting the start split on here, so. Um, but yeah, Alina Vitola, absolutely fantastic this morning in the women. Very unlucky to miss out on the podium, I felt. Um, that Germany 1 2 3 sweep. Congratulations, Team Germany, for that. Uh, but Vitola looking good here. It's all coming together quite nicely for her right now. Looks like she's on rails down this track. A bit high in 15. Oh, caught the pressure quite nicely in 16. Head back, toes pointed. Oh, little tap on that right wall. Almost lost the sled. Releasing box plume. These guys had an absolute stormer of a race in Lake Placid last week. Martin's box and Robert's plume following the footsteps of the six brothers, I guess. Yeah, so much time. doubles these, knowledge these are, in this nation. These are a fierce pair, these guys. It's incredible to watch them race. The, uh, the competitive, their, their competitiveness is just through the roof. Okay, Bots Plume still in the red, though, shows just how impressive that Team Austria run was. But they are catching up. There's a tenth in it, ladies and gentlemen, maybe a tenth and change. Nice exit, a little bit of a push from the curve there. Here we go, the big man, Christas. Christas Appiards, the 2016 Youth Olympic champion. And since then, I mean, he was that size when he was in the Youth Olympics. He's an absolute beast, isn't he? Yeah. Big, strong, tall, rangy athlete, and he can actually, he can slide beautifully as well. He got on the podium yesterday too, so if he puts this all together right now, they, they've got a real shot to really extend this lead. Very, looking very A little well early, the 12 there. 
little bump on, wasn't it? Yeah, he can throw you off a little bit, but he's, he's handled it quite nicely. Squeezing yeah. those pressures perfectly. I love the push out of 16 there too. That's one of the nicest exits of 16 we've seen as he releases from the top. Hold on for Zidina. Victoria Zidina and Selena Zblinna. So another newish pairing for the women's doubles here. It's been a kind of experimental phase for women's doubles for a lot of teams, hasn't it? They've been testing how um, synergistic some of these athletes are together. You have to get on too, right? You've got to be friends with your doubles partner. And that's, a, that's a very super important part of it. Yeah, you've got to be, you've got to be aligned. Yeah. yeah, definitely. OK, lovely entrance to 16 there. Drop a little low in the middle, though. That may catch them oh. on the end. Incredibly so good job to straighten that up. Wow, eight tenths from that skid. That's incredible. Oh my goodness. That is disaster for Lavia. They were doing so well, but they've dropped into fourth position. I think that just speaks on the pressure these girls are facing. You know, their first team relay event, you know, not many runs on a double sled, and then, you know, being last off in the team relay yeah. event. That's, that's a lot of pressure right, right there for those girls. It's tons of pressure, you know, when you've got your teammates relying on you, you know, you, they, they would say don't worry about it afterwards, I'm sure, but you must feel that pressure. Yeah. So what that does to our standings is USA can do no worse than a bronze medal. Austria can do no worse than a silver, but right now in gold medal position is Austria. In silver medal position is the United States of America. And in bronze medal position is Team Italy. But we have one team to go that is looking to ruin the party for some of those athletes, and that is the dominant, incredibly impressive Team Germany. Mm -hmm. Here pa goes Christa out of the top. Look at this guy go. Yeah, they some great looking paddles. I like how clean he looks getting into the sled as well. It's always so neat and tidy. Well, he's got a big chassis to get into that sh sled, hasn't yeah. he? I mean, it's... Uh, yeah. He's super consistent getting into the sled. If I could take something away from his sliding and bring it to my own, that's that's what I would take. How yeah. clean he is getting into the sled. Look at that. That was That's commitment, just staying, taking the hits, but keeping your eye on the prize. Yeah, the they did well out. to get the pad there, you know, but going <laughs> sideways through there. <laughs> Krista's upper yards with an incredibly fast run there as well. Fastest run we've seen so far today down the track as we have Team Germany getting ready. Team Austria looking incredibly pleased with themselves, but there's the man of the moment, Max Langerhan. He's the man to beat in the singles, isn't he? My goodness. He is on fire right now. It's it's quiet. I like his sled's on rails. I don't know what he's doing, but it's working. <laughs> Julia Talbots of Germany sets us off from the team relay start. This is our final sled, ladies and gentlemen. The dominant, aggressive, incredibly impressive Team Germany. Let's go, Talbots. Such a positive athlete. I love watching her slide because win or lose, she's always got a smile on her face. She does, yeah, it's great to see. She's she's a she's a great role model for the sport in general. Yeah, I would say so. And you know, the, the kids I coach that watch her, the most of them she's their favourite huge athlete. Put it Into the green, two hundredths of a second ahead of Austria at this very early point. Half decent curve sixteen as well. Beautiful exit from sixteen. As she releases from the top with what looked like an incredibly good reaction time. We're going to find that out in a second. Wendell R. Uh, the Tobies. Now, if you're going to release any double team from the top after your singles run, these are the guys you'd want to get out the gate. Oh, yeah, big time. So dominant in the sport after so many years. 12 Olympic gold medals between them. Yeah, and their attitude, they're always smiling. They're just having fun with it, these guys. Like, they go on, they go on hikes and skiing on the, you know, sometimes the morning before their training. It's, it's, there's something else. And it looks like it's working because we're now two tenths ahead of Team Austria with the Wendell Alt Factor. Factor in the Tobies, anything can happen. Showing their experience, hardly lifting off the sled. And here goes Max Langenhan with that sled on rails that we were talking about. Still in the green, Team Germany ahead of Team Austria. Two phenomenal runs from those last two sleds, and we'll see what Max can do right now, but I wouldn't expect anything different. I haven't seen him made a mistake in a while, you know? There we go. There we go. Just Half building. A second. This is incredible sliding from Team Germany. 
Max Langenhan, probably the best athlete on tour in the men's field right now, in my opinion. Lovely curve 16. Staying low, staying low, staying low. Releases, taking wow. Hart Rosenthal off the top. Again, I, they've got to practice this. You know, the, that changeover looked so quick. It did. It was an awesome reaction start. Max just three down. Like, he's, he's showing off right now. <laughs> yeah, he's showing off. Wouldn't that be nice? Be that much at the top of your game to think, oh, just go and win another gold medal. Okay, seven tenths of a second ahead of Austria. Barring catastrophe, we are looking at the coronation for this, for our first four-person or four-team team relay gold medalists. Dropping a little bit of time, though, yeah. through the bottom section. Beautiful exit from 16. It's all done by the shouting. Up she goes, half a second. Team Germany, your winners, ladies and gentlemen, for this Eberspacher. Team Relay World Cup presented by BMW. That is Team Germany in first place. Half a second behind and change is Team Austria. And then six tenths of a second back from that in bronze medal position, United States of America. Italy in fourth, Latvia in fifth, Team Canada in sixth, Poland in seventh, Ukraine in eighth, and Romania in ninth. But Team Germany, what have you got to say? I mean, they put down four brilliant runs. They got the best sleds in the world, and the reaction starts with the roof. It's uh, it's expected. Like these guys are a force to be reckoned with. When you put them all together like that in a team atmosphere, yeah, they're going to be pretty unstoppable. That's dominant. Look, over half a second. You've got to think with the rest of the team relay uh, season in the Avis Buckle BMW team relay. You've got to think that they could sweep the board in every race with that. I mean, nothing's ever. Nothing's ever certain in team relay. It's the yeah. wacky races. It is a wacky race with four sleds going down the hill. Man, anything can happen. But yeah, it is theirs to lose, really. Such a fantastic sliding from Team Germany and look what it means to them. You know, when you win gold medals as a habit, to be that happy every week is pretty cool. <laughs> I'm sure you don't get bored of it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it never gets dull. Okay, here we go. This is Max. Is this Max or is this Julia? Max. Um, no, Julia. Julia. Um, beautiful sliding there. You know, just looking so soft on the sled. You were talking about how the body acts as a suspension yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah, you got to feel your way down the track, like really feel the ice under your steels on the way down and lay back into it. And really got a fist to that paddle right there. That's, that's how it's done. With power and authority. Beautiful entrance to 16 there as well from Max. I mean, it's, it's, it's tough commentating these kind of runs because there's really not much to pick apart, is there? They're just there's four, uh, yeah. Kids watching from home, this is how it's done. Yeah. Okay, so now we get to our flower ceremony. Look at the, I love the camaraderie in this sport. You know, these, these athletes, they travel the world together. Um, they, they, they hang out together, don't they? It's a, it's a close-knit tour, and it's like a family. It is. It's, it, they're a great bunch to be around. I, um, traveling from week to week to different locations with all these guys is, is quite special. And good to see a North American team on the podium as well, and Team USA. You know, on a North American track, it's great to see uh, the semi-home team, yeah. you know, of USA and Whistler. Um, yeah, they, they, so well. the Americans spend a bit of time training, training here in the preseason as well, so they've, um, they've had their fair share of runs in Whistler. And leading up to the World Champs next, next season, um, I'm sure a lot, more, a, lot, a lot more nations will be here in the preseason next year as well. Absolutely. Marlene Verboom, that long-standing volunteer for Luge Canada and the officials, world chairman of the jury here right now, handing out the awards for this Avisbacher Team Relay World Cup presented by BMW. It's beautiful here. That's why they love coming here, isn't it? Look at those mountains. It's stunning. It really is. And the clouds just like floating around the hills. It's uh, something special. It really is. Wolfgang Kindle there looking incredibly proud of himself. Um, as he should. I mean, you're, is it his third race, I guess? It's his third race on a double sled. Uh, he's had two doubles races, medaled in both, and then medals in this one. He's got to be thinking this doubles lock, it's pretty easy. <laughs> yeah, oh, I, wonder how, I wonder how long he'll do both for. I think, I think he just loves sliding, so the more time he can spend on a sled, the happier he'll be. 
Well, congratulations to Team Germany. I mean, they've really been the team team to watch this weekend. They've had a fantastic weekend. Austria as well. Some uh, some uncharacteristic, mis the uncharacteristic mistakes from the Austrians this weekend, um, but still a force to be reckoned with. And USA. I mean, USA have been great. Blooding new athletes from the juniors as well. You know, it's great to see them try thinking about building their program and backfilling the program with junior athletes. Yeah. They've brought on um, some awesome coaches as well. Their, their program's Yeager. really really going really yeah. taking some steps right now and it's great to see yeah tony egger being the big signing for the usa as we go to our final results for this avis Bacher luge world cup team relay presented by bmw and germany in gold medal position austria the silver medalist and the united states of america your bronze medalist italy following it up latvia canada in six poland in seventh ukraine in eighth and romania in ninth Wow, what a weekend. Yeah, I can't believe it's done. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and, you know, there's, every single race has provided drama. Drama, excitement, the crowd have loved it. I mean, I can we can hear the crowd outside cheering from inside our commentary booth, mm -hmm. which is supposedly soundproofed. I mean, we can hear the crowd going wild. It's wonderful to see them there. And uh, like we say, Whistler is such an events town, such a great town. Ladies and gentlemen, watching from home, if you haven't been to Whistler, put it on your bucket list. Even if you don't ski, get yourselves out here. It's just the most wonderful winter wonderland. And actually in summer, it's pretty cool as well. Yeah, so you gotta make your way here for world champs next year. Two weeks in Whistler, may as well make a ski trip out of it, right? Exactly, and you can <laughs> ski straight into the track. Well, not actually into the track, but into the, <laughs> yeah. into the venue, we should say. Um, yeah, absolutely, World Championships 2025. That's incredibly exciting. I guess these guys, Okay, so this has been Abus Parker Team Relay World Cup presented by BMW. I've been Mark Hatton. I've had Alex Falaxo in the booth with me today. He's been incredibly insightful. Great guy to call the race with. Thank you, Alex. And best of luck for the rest of the season and for the coming back to the World Championships in 2025. Thank you very much, Mark. <laughs> Here, um,